The History of Double Entry Bookkeeping The Double Entry Bookkeeping is one of the most ancient accounting systems. It's made of two equal and corresponding sides. The left-hand side is debit, the right-hand side is credit. The sum of debit and credit must be kept equal, otherwise the account liability is compromised. One of the first recorded mentions come from Naturalis Historio, or Natural History, in 77 AD, which is the first ever written encyclopedia by Gaius Plinius Secundus, also known as Pliny the Elder, one of my favorite Roman authors. He was a lawyer and a commander for the Emperor Nero and later Vespasian, but he was also a naturalist and a natural philosopher in his spare time. His fervor for studying and researching natural phenomena was recounted by his nephew Pliny the Younger. He used to begin to study at night on the festival of Vulcan, not for luck but from his love of study, long before dawn. In winter he would commence at the seventh hour. He could sleep at call, and it would come upon him and leave him in the middle of his work. Before daybreak he would go to Vespasian, for he too was a night worker, and then set about his official duties. On his return home, he would again give to study any time that he had free. With this dedication, he published 10 out of the 37 volumes of the encyclopedia. The rest was published posthumously by his nephew. After the death of his uncle due to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, he went to research. Natural history is one of the largest single works to have survived from the Roman Empire and purports to cover the entire field of ancient knowledge. It encompasses the fields of botany, zoology, astronomy, geology, and mineralogy, as well as the exploitation of those resources. In regards to accounting, he wrote, on one page all the disbursements are entered, on the other page all the receipts. Both pages constitute a whole for each operation of every man. This was called the tabulae rationum or books of the table, and every Roman head of family was required to keep a record of domestic accounts. This ledger was always kept in high regard. For example, in 77 BC, the lawyer and renowned orator Cicero used the evidence of a client's well-kept ledger to argue in court for his good character and trustworthiness, saying, Day books last for a month, ledgers forever. Day. Books embrace the memory of a moment. Ledgers attest the good faith and conscientiousness which ensure a man's reputation for all time. This proves that a basic concept of bookkeeping already existed since ancient Rome. But to develop a similar version to the modern day double entry bookkeeping, there has to be the necessity. Particularly, there has to be great exchanges of money and wares. Starting from the 11th century, Italian cities or commune began to expand, gaining new power and autonomy from feudal overlords to the point of resembling city states. The governments were formed by a mix of landless nobles and well-regarded citizens, usually very rich and head of a guild. The merchant guild and the banker guild were among the most powerful, and there is strong evidence that these developed an accounting system very similar to modern times. But to have a written record of the double entry bookkeeping, we must go to Venice in 1458 when a Ragusan merchant, Benedetto Contragli, wrote his manuscript Della Mercatura e del Mercante Perfetto, were on trade and the perfect dealer. This book goes through every aspect of a trader's life, starting from buying and selling all kinds of wares, the proper way to make and repay debt, then moving on how to give a speech and to describe all the virtues of a good merchant, to end with the proper way to care about your wife, kids, and heritage. About this subject, I would like to read an excerpt. Some have a worried face. Those are by nature timid and hardly learn. You have to teach them with great commitment. Give them freedom and boldness with caresses. Widen the bridle just like you would do with horses when they clash with each other. Yikes! In regards of accounting, Contragli wrote, Shall the merchant always keep three books, the journal, the copper book, and the memorial? In the journal you shall group and order all your capital. Then you'll duplicate in the copper book. There with your capital you shall enter the market and write down every debt or credit until the last transaction of the day. In the memorial you shall note every night, or in the early morning, all the negotiations of that day. Then you'll start again with the journal. At the end of the year you shall check with the starting figures and write down your gain. There you have it. Not only the origin of the double entry bookkeeping, but also the first record, an instruction on how to write a balance sheet from 500 years ago. Still, nagging the humans. 